<clears throat> Amen. God's wonderful people. I don't know if that means as much to you as it does to me, but it sure does mean a lot to me. I love God's people. I thank God for the church. I'm a church man. I've always been a church man ever since I got saved, and I don't regret a mile. I travel for the Lord, supporting His church. And I tell you, one day He's coming for this church. The blood-washed crowd, we're going to be with Him forever. And what a wonderful time that'll be. I want to turn for just a few minutes tonight. We've got a bigger crowd here tonight than I thought we'd have, really. I thought, you know, a lot of people are gone. A lot of people already told me they wouldn't be here and all that. But I'm glad you're here. And I hope God will bless you for being here. Over here in John chapter number 10 on page 1129. 1129 in the old Schofield Bible. John chapter 10 and verse number 3. To him the porter openeth, and the sheep hear his voice. And he calleth his own sheep by name, and leadeth them out. And when he putteth forth his own sheep, he goeth before them, and the sheep follow him, for they know his voice. I want to talk a little bit tonight about <coughs> following the shepherd because you know his voice. Now, there is no greater example anywhere in the world than the example Jesus Christ himself gave. He set a great example so that, uh, and in so many ways that we're bound to see something that would really grip our heart if we're a born-again child of God. He's a great example of love and of compassion, of care, and of protection. All of these things, uh, Jesus set a good example. Now, and of course, the greatest description, one of the greatest descriptions the, we have in the Bible about Jesus is in Psalm 23, the Lord is my shepherd. He is the great shepherd, the good shepherd, the chief shepherd. Now, pastors are God's under shepherds. We're not God's we're just called of God to shepherd His people here on this earth. God gave pastors to the church according to Ephesians 4, and that is a very definite call and presentation of God Himself. Man didn't invent the church. Jesus said, upon this church I will build my, upon this rock I will build my church. So the church is really a valid entity. Pastors are God's under shepherds of a reality. Some pastors are not good shepherds because they do not follow the example of Jesus Christ. As I behold the ministry myself, and I see some of the careless pastors in our town, and they're everywhere, but I notice them in our own town where they're very careless about trying to follow the Lord Jesus. Some don't seem to care about following His example. I also observe some whom I believe are dedicated and consecrated to God, and they're determined to follow Jesus Christ and His example. They care for their flock. They preach the Word of God. They stand for the book, the blood, and the blessed hope. These are exemplary people today, and we need more and more preachers like this who shepherd God's church, who are under shepherds and pastor God's churches and are caring for God's churches. Now, as I have talked with some of these and fellowship with them and listened to them, of course, testify, and some of them preach, and I've com I'm convinced that they are exemplary shepherds. I believe they are good men. I believe that a good under shepherd will be following Jesus Christ's example in the fact that they are willing to lead. In Psalm 23, 2 and 3, He maketh me to lie down in green pastures. He leadeth me beside the still waters. John 10, 3, to him the porter openeth that we just read, and the sheep hear his voice, and he calleth his own sheep by name, and leadeth them out, and when he putteth forth his own sheep, he goeth before them. And of course he said, the sheep follow him, for they know his voice. Now we have in Psalm 100 and verse 3, we are his people and the sheep of his pastor. So we are definitely called the sheep that belong to the Lord Jesus. Now the good shepherd always goes ahead to show the way. Jesus has shown us the way to heaven. He is the way to heaven. As a matter of fact, he said, I am the way. And no man cometh unto the Father but by me. Jesus would never lead his sheep wrong. He is a good shepherd. And I say this, there's not a good pastor that follows that example would ever lead 
his church wrong. Now, I have, and you've heard me say this, and I'll repeat it because it's the truth. I've asked God to never let me lead you wrong. I've asked God in prayer, serious prayer, never to let me teach or preach a lie. No, I wouldn't do it deliberately, but I could accidentally say something wrong and lead you wrong. But before I would ever do that, I would want God to kill me. That's how serious I am about telling you the truth. That's the reason I stand on this truth. That's the reason I don't deviate. That's the reason I don't go to another so-called Bible. I don't go anywhere else looking for information. My information is right here. And what I read in this Bible, I feel that I have the right, brother, and the honor, and the privilege to stand up with this book and proclaim it to anybody that'll listen. There are people that listen by this streaming. The other night, Wednesday night, I believe by the time we got out of here good, we had over a thousand people that were tuning in. Well, we've got people tuning in on streaming right now. And I want you to know there are people out there that are really compromising the Word of God. You've got preachers that are. I'm not a, I'm not a show off. I'm not a bigoted person. I'm not picking on denomination. I'm not picking on anybody for the sake of doing that. I'm saying that preachers are supposed to look after their flock. They're to love their church enough to get the truth and preach the truth to them. Absolutely. Now, I don't want you to have to go to bed tonight and say, I wonder if our preacher told us the truth. I want you to be able to go to bed tonight and say, praise God, my pastor told me the truth tonight. He got it right out of God's Word. He was really telling the truth. Why would I get up here tonight after all these years and waste my time telling you a lie? I don't have an, I don't have an agenda. I don't have something that I'm trying to work up and work down and get somebody to follow me. I don't want you to follow me as, as a human being, but as I follow Christ, I do. And that's what you're expected to do, and I'll show you in a moment. Jesus would never lead anybody wrong. Neither would his good under-shepherd. All the sheep may not want to follow all the time, and they don't, I'm sorry to say. I would to God that every sheep would be willing to follow the truth all the time, every day, every time we come together. Some people will be right today, next week they're wrong. Next week they're right, and then the next week they're wrong. Sometimes they feel good and they feel like following, next day they don't feel like following. In 2 Timothy 4, 2, the Bible said to the preacher, preach the word, be instant in season, out of season, reprove, rebuke, exhort with all long suffering and doctrine. That's my job, whether you do follow or whether you don't. My job is to preach it. My job is to tell you what this Word of God says. And if there's anybody here that can say that I'm not telling you what this Word of God says, trot up here, trot up here and show me where I have missed the mark. And I'll, I'll apologize to this whole crowd. But if you can't find anything, then listen to what it says. The shepherd must lead his people. In 1 Corinthians 4.11, Paul gives some of the experiences and the circumstances of his own leadership. But he says in verse 15, For in Christ Jesus I have begotten you through the gospel, wherefore I beseech you, be ye followers of me. Paul said, follow me. I'm saying to you, follow me. Not because I want you to follow my selfish fleshly things, but I want you to follow me as I follow him. That's the order. That is the order. That's the right order. Somebody says, what do you go over there to that church for? Listen to that man scream and preach and all that. Listen, I'm not just screaming and making noise. I'm reading God's Word. I'm reading His Word in Philippians 3.17. Another scripture, brethren, be followers together of me. He said it again. And mark them which walk so as you have us for an example. In other words, Paul said, am I not an example of the faith? Am I not showing you that Christ is in me? And uh, Brother Joe and I were talking about that very thing a while ago. Brother, I tell you, I appreciate Brother Joe Papalotto. I tell you, he's growing in the Lord. He's interested in souls. He's got him a good Bible, a good Schofield reference Bible. He's following along in the Scriptures. 
reading and studying and loving it. And Brother Joe, I'm not trying to embarrass you, but I sure am proud of you. Thank God. Let's give him a hand today. He told me a while ago they've been coming here about six years, and that just now, it took that long for him to just now give his heart over to Jesus Christ. Isn't that something? But hey, what if I'd have said a long time ago, I'm giving up? No, you just keep on preaching. Somebody else is going to get in. I got several more on my prayer list that are definitely going to get in. I'm looking forward to it. Had a young couple. They're not here tonight, I don't think. They came this morning, and they wanted me to marry them. And they want to join this church. And they said they talk about things during the week. And when they get to church every single week, we'll say something out of this pulpit that they talked about. I said, that's the Holy Spirit. That's the Spirit of God. They, he knew what you needed. He knew what you were talking about. He knew what you wanted to know. And God sent you to his church to get it. Hallelujah. I remember when I was young, started out, and I had things on my mind. I studied the Bible, read things. I'd go to church, and Preacher Johnson would just preach right down my alley. He'd preach the thing that I was talking about, thinking about, meditating on. Brother, God is real. God is real. You just follow him. Follow the Lord. So then Jesus was Paul's example, and Paul was a great example to his churches, and he loved all of those churches that he established. Good under-shepherds have shown all of us great examples of leadership. All churches do not have good shepherds, under-shepherds. Some churches have bad shepherds, I'm sorry to say. Now, these exemplary, exemplary uh, shepherds, they lead. But not only do they lead and follow Christ's example, but they restore following Christ's example. Verse number 3 of Psalm 23, he restoreth my soul. Sheep are so precious to Christ. He loves his people. He loves his sheep. And he wants to restore every sick sheep in the church. If you're a sick sheep tonight, he wants to restore you. A good under shepherd feels the same way. If there's something wrong in your spiritual life, I'd like to help you if I can. In studying about sheep, one finds that there are diversities of illnesses in sheep. Now, these are great hindrances to the flock. For instance, there is a disease called foot rot. Foot rot. And my friend, in this, of course, foot rot is a germ which gets in the foot, and they pick it up different places. You don't know exactly every time where it came from, but it sure shows up in the walk of that sheep. Now, if it goes too long, it'll cripple the sheep. And the only cure for it is to cut it out. Cut that infection out and minister healing to that sheep's foot. Many church members are not walking right right now. They've got foot rot. They've gotten away from God. They're not walking circumspectly. They're not walking uh, in worthy of the vocation wherein he's called them. No, my friend, they're walking away from God. They're walking afar off, as it were. And so, my friend, they are crippled. They're getting worse and worse, and if something's not hap uh, uh, it doesn't take place, and they don't get it straightened out, and get healed up, and get that foot well, then it's going to hinder very greatly. In 2 Corinthians 5 and verse 7, for we walk by faith, not by sight. So don't start thinking you've got to walk by sight. You can't see everything with a natural eye. Somebody said, I don't believe only what I see with a natural eye. You think that, you say that, but you're not thinking correctly. Because I've always used the electricity as an illustration. You don't see the uh, power going through these uh, wires that are turning your lights on. Just go out there and turn that little switch, and it'll, they'll all go off. Turn it back on, they'll all come on. You don't see that. But, brother, you see the light. You see what's going on. You're getting the benefit of the light. So not only is there a foot right for sheep, but there's a stomach trouble that some sheep have. Sheep sometimes get into some grass, bad grass, bad pasture, and they eat that foliage, and it makes them sick. It doesn't help them at all, but it makes them sick internally. Now, the shepherd must administer the correct medicine and diet to these sick sheep. Sometimes Christians get sick inside by digesting unscriptural teachings and listening to judgmental attitudes 
and listening to gossip and criticism and all the rest of that other stuff, they get sick inside. My friend, they're not happy. They're not motivated like they were. So many church members have developed bad attitudes. The good shepherd will carefully restore such a person if they'll let him. In other words, if you've got a bad attitude tonight, I want you to straighten that out right now. And I'm not fussing at you. I'm just telling you I want to help you. A bad attitude will lead to disaster. A bad attitude will cause trouble that, brother, you've never dreamed of. So if you've got a bad attitude, get rid of it now. Are you jealous of anybody? Hey, why? Are you envious of anybody? Why? You don't have to be envious of anybody. You don't have to be jealous of anybody. You're the best looking thing sitting here. What are you worried about somebody else for? Huh? Pretty thing. Hey, you say, well, and I've used this a lot too. Well, that old stuff on her hair ain't real. <laughs> she put that stuff on her to make her look better. Well, if you want to look good as she does, put some on yours. <laughs> Amen. And you don't have to fuss. You don't have to criticize. You don't have to find fault. Well, I don't like her because so-and-so likes her or him better than me. They just show more attention to them than they do me. Quit being pitiful. Amen. Praise God. If you want some attention, go out there and get it. Eric, if I thought you were mad at me, you know what I'd do? I'd come down there and sit down in your lap. <laughs> I would. I'd say, Eric, are you mad at me? I'd find out if he's mad at me. If he says yes, I say, well, oh, goodbye. <laughs> but if he says no, I say, praise God, I just wanted to find out because, you, you know, I felt like I was thinking the wrong thing. But don't let all that old thinking just keep on, keep on, keep on. You get so sick, after a while, you're hurting everybody. It affects everybody. And then there are sores that come on sheep. The, uh, the sheep gets a scrape or a, or a cut, a small scratch or whatever. And the flies immediately settle on that scratch or that scrape. And they begin to blow if they can. They begin to go from one place to another. You know how flies are. We're all acquainted with flies. And so they turn that little scrape into a real sore. It gets infected. It gets worse and worse. And then if something is not done, this can lead to a lot of trouble for the sheep and It'll spread to other sheep. The sheep that has the sore is suffering, but it, the flies spread it to other sheep. And after a while, other sheep are infected uh, with a sore. Now, a potent remedy must be applied right here to that sore. And much cleansing and dressing given to that infected area until it's well. A good shepherd will do that. A good under-shepherd, I'm not mad, I'm not mean, I'm not trying to hurt anybody, but I see, if I see a sore, I got to treat it. I got to do something about it. I got to, I got to clean that sore, I got to dress that sore, it hurts. Brother, you ever go to the hospital and you've just hurt yourself and they go to washing that thing, scrubbing it like it's, you know, not there? Hey, what are you doing, Doc? I'm trying to make it worse? He's cleaning it out. I remember having a piece of iron went in my arm when I was working for Dan River. I remember that thing going in there, and it went in an inch in my arm. And I pulled it out. And it didn't even bleed, but just a little bit, it bled inside my arm. And when I went to the doctor, he took a, some kind of a plunger, went down in that thing an inch, and I thought, what are you doing putting another piece of iron in there? That didn't felt like a piece of iron. Brother, he stirred around in there. He said, I got to make sure there's no piece left in there. Whew. But when he got through, it was a week before I could ever work with that arm. I had to put it in a sling and work with one hand so I wouldn't have a lost time accident. But listen, you got to work on the uh, wounded area, and sometimes it hurts. Sometimes it doesn't feel good when that doctor is working on that infected area, but it has to be done. So the sores become so infectious that if you don't do something about it, they start stinking. You ever seen an old stinking Christian? You ever seen an old stinking church member? Man alive, every time you see them coming, whew, there he comes again. I remember over at the other church, you remember 
we had one lady, she sat right back here where Harold Taylor's sitting in that church over there. And I'd go around shaking hands with everybody. Y'all have heard me tell this, some of you have. I'd come around shaking hands like I do. And I'd get to her and I'd say, Mrs. <clears throat> Doe, <laughs> Jane Doe, uh, how are you? <laughs> Miserable. Miserable. So when I'd come around shaking hands, I'd come around this way and go up that way. And then I'd find something here that gave me my, it caught my attention. I'd come this way. Then I'd go back down this way and go around that way. I got where I missed her. I didn't shake her old hand. If you're going to be that grumpy, I just don't want to be. You stink. You stink to high heaven. So, now she had let me, and I tried my best to get her healed up, but she wouldn't heal. I think it was a cancer. It was, it was terminal. And I couldn't get her healed. Some of them, you lose, you know. You lose some, you gain some. But Hebrews chapter 12, verse 15, the Bible says, looking diligently, lest any man fail of the grace of God. And that's not falling from grace now. Don't, don't read something into it. He said, lest any root of bitterness springing up trouble you, and thereby many be defiled. If you let stuff go on like that, let it go on, let, you know, many will be defiled. What if this whole church got in a bad attitude at one time? What if everybody got sore? Everybody got a foot rot? Everybody had all these problems at one time? We wouldn't have a church. The devil will take it over like he has a lot of them. So once again, the shepherd pours in the oil. Here's the secret, buddy. The oil and the wine making the sheep well, restoring it to good life. Listen, my friend, the oil is the Holy Ghost and the wine is joy. And the two things that will keep a church motivated and moving. And like we were talking, Brother Pulley, the other day or this morning, I believe, feeling God's presence already. You know what makes it? The Holy Ghost and the joy. The Holy Ghost gives us joy. The Bible says the joy of the Lord is your strength. And brother, when you're strong, you can get the job done. And when the Holy Ghost is filling you, you're not sore. You're not sick. You're not having problems, friend. You're the healthiest person in the world spiritually. And you're ready to go on for God and do things for Him. The Holy Ghost is important to the church of the living God. And the wine, the joy. So they have the foot rot, you have the stomach trouble, and you have the sores, but lastly you have that helplessness. Sometimes sheep will roll over somewhere, maybe into a ditch. I read about this, and they fall up, or get on their back, and their feet are sticking straight up. And they don't have sense enough to exert themselves over and get on their feet again. They just lie there and die if somebody doesn't help them. If help doesn't come, they die with their feet sticking straight up and they won't try to get out of their condition. Well, if they do not get the help that they need, they're not going to last. So many church members become careless. They become comfortable around dangerous situations. And finally, they find themselves in a helpless situation. They can't get loose from what's got a hold to them. Before they know it, they have become helpless, and they're not living upright for God they are upside down, as it were. They're just absolutely helpless. And that's a pitiful sign. They become passive and lose power. They lose power to be active and decisive. Now, there must be a good shepherd in every flock. Every church needs a good man of God. And I'm not saying I'm a good man of God. Don't get me wrong. But let me tell you something. Before I stop preaching this word, I'll get out of the pulpit. I'll never stand here and not say I love preaching God's Word. I do love preaching God's Word. So we all know that Jesus Christ is the Good Shepherd, the Great Shepherd, and the Chief Shepherd, and He's our example. But He has made pastors under shepherds. He said He gave pastors and teachers to the church in Ephesians 4. Some are good and some are not good, I'm sorry to say. But a good pastor will lead his flock. Are you being led right? Do you believe you're being led right in spiritual matters tonight? Do you believe that this preacher is deceiving you in any way? Or leading you down a, black, a, blind, a blind alley somewhere? Or leading you into some dangerous thing? I'm not. No, I'm not. You know I'm not. And then, my friend, that pastor cares for his flock. I care for all of you. I love all of you from the depths of my heart. And then he restores his flock to good life when they fail. I mean, when you fail and you come and tell me about it, 
You don't have to worry about me saying, hey, huh, you're no good. You just might as well go on. You're no good. No, I'm going to say, praise God, brother. I'm glad you came. Let's pray. Let's get this thing right. And let me tell you something. God will restore you every time. He never come to God and be turned down. God's always available to forgive and to forget all of your problems and all of your failures. And thank God he does. And I don't hold it against anybody who's ever sinned in this church. I don't care who you are and what kind of sin you've committed. If you're ready for restoration, I'm ready. God's ready. He'll restore you right now. There's not a sin in here that cannot be forgiven right now. Right now. All you have to do is confess it. You say, what, will that get me saved again? No. It'll restore your fellowship. It'll heal you spiritually. You'll be a, you'll be a well sheep rather than a sick sheep. And then he pours in that oil. I love it. And then he prepares a table so you can have a good meal. Thank God. And he feeds the sheep. The shepherd feeds and leads. And then he sets an example for you. I'm not out living in sin tonight. I'm a sinner saved by grace. I'm full of flesh. I'm just like every other fleshly person. I'm a human being. I'm not a God. The only difference in me and any other Christian is the call that God put on me to be a preacher. That's the only difference. And brother, let me tell you something. The devil tries to interfere with that. He's tried down through the years to get me to give it up. And I've told you a time or two that I've had my resignation three times over these 50 years in the flyleaf of my Bible already written out. I was going to read it to the church. I'm resigning. I'm resigning. I'm quitting. And then when I get up here, praise God. Hallelujah. God's people get to singing, get to shouting and praising God. And I just take that old resignation paper and tear it up. I'm not going to resign. I'm going to stay here and fight a little further and a little longer. There have been times I'd say this is the last time I'm going to Truth Missionary Baptist Church, especially when I first started telling people to come to church, inviting them to church. They'd tell me they would come. They'd lie. They wouldn't come. I'd get sick and mad, and I'd say, I'm just not coming back out here. But then before Sunday came, I'd be back out there opening that old squeaking door on that little old building, and God would bring those people right back in, some more people. Hey, you can't give up. Don't ever utterly stop. When you utterly fail, you can quit, but you won't utterly fail serving God. So he, you got to set an example of concern, of compassion, and of care. And you've got to be ambitious and ample and able, the good shepherd, the pastor of a church. So it's wise to have Jesus as our shepherd and our example. It is also wise to follow a good under-shepherd that is following him. And if you are not following your under-shepherd, you need to wake up. Let's stand. We're going to pray. If anybody needs to be saved, come on up here and we'll show you how to be saved. And other than that, we're going to pray and let you go home happy, whatever it is, New Year's. Happy New Year's. Praise the Lord. Every day is a good day for serving the Lord. Heavenly Father, we thank you for another opportunity to be in the house of God. Lord, we thank you for the good day you've given us. Even though it's cold, it's a good day. And we thank you for every blessing. Thank you for this church and what it stands for and what it means to us and what it means to this community and what it means to this nation. Father, some may not think that they're all that important, but Lord, we know that there are hundreds and maybe thousands that are listening to this program right now. So Lord, we commit every one to thee. And if there's someone here without Christ, help them to come to Christ right now and be saved. Father, help us to be revived in our heart. Help us to get our hearts in tune with heaven and let us do it every day. Don't let us just do it on Sunday, but let us serve God totally and completely Monday through Monday. I thank you for what you've done, for what you're doing right now and what you're going to do because we ask it all in Jesus' name and for his sake. Amen. God bless you. We'll see you Wednesday night, 730. Amen.